My day in the life of an amputee began like any other. Let's get the pictures. After an hour of filling my mind with knowledge at the local university, my husband dropped off her toddler on his way to work. While our two older kids were at their schools, filling their minds with knowledge. With my sidekick in tow, we ventured across campus. Being an amputee comes with challenges. The same goes for parenthood. Combine the two and things are bound to get interesting. After locating the correct building, all we had to do was go to the second floor. Ah, stairs. My nemesis. Nope, don't want those. Elevator. That's more like it. Ooh, watch out. Careful. Careful. Don't fall in the chasm. Oh, you made it. Shoot, that was close. Up we go. Another chasm. We've got this. What's around this corner? Oh, stairs again. Mama has an issue with stairs. We'll pass. It being the first day of school, there was a significant line. My sidekick saved me from boredom by providing ample entertainment and a good workout. Do you ever get the feeling these counters were made for taller people? I used to be five foot two, but I recently lost a foot. Ah, this counters more my speed. Finally, it's my turn. I'll just hand in some paperwork, ask a quick question, and oh, excuse me, I'll be right back. Stairs, why does it have to be stairs? Come to mama. Thwarted by a flight of stairs and a two-year-old. I could always bail from my chair and crawl up the stairs. But if the baby keeps going, there's no way I'm going to catch him. Hmm. If he runs off at the next floor, I'd be stuck without my wheelchair and no way of catching him. If I take the elevator to the next floor, he could go somewhere unexpected and I could lose him. Hmm. Now you're just taunting me, you tiny two-legger. Thankfully, a little bribery reeled him in. This isn't my first kid, and I know the tricks of the trade. If you're worried that when my baby was on the run, I stopped to pull out a camera, don't be. While a lot of footage is from the actual day, some is a reenactment, during which I had a friend ready to snag the baby in case he went too far. This day is just going to get crazier, so I simply had to come back and film it. After turning in my paperwork, we headed outside. While disabled people definitely face unique challenges, we also have normal elements in our lives, just like anyone else. Odds are, you and I have more in common than we have differences. It's just that those differences are, shall we say, obvious. At the end of the day, we're all just people trying to make the best lives we can for ourselves. With one thing off my to-do list, it was time to attend to some other ordinary tasks though they were destined not to end in an ordinary way. We For once, gravity is on my side. That was fun. Just another half mile and we'll make it to the car. I know what you're thinking. Why can't a disabled mom park closer? In an ideal world, I totally would. But newsflash, we don't live in an ideal world. Just because there's handicapped parking doesn't mean there will be enough spaces for all the people who need them. Just like an accessible curb. This is a handicap accessible curb. It's not necessarily wheelchair friendly. And cars won't always stop even at a crosswalk. 
this is another wheelchair accessible curb. Here we go. We did it, can't run over. People are often shocked that I drive myself around, but I was sensible enough not to cut off my driving foot. The one I have left is sufficient to get the job done, even if it isn't as convenient as life in the two later days. If anything, I've gained an all-purpose limb. Back in the day, I used to bike everywhere, running errands, taking kids to school, grocery shopping, you name it. Click the like button if you think my hubby's being a show off. Now that I'm disabled, having a reliable vehicle has been vital. Not just because pedaling is tricky without feet, you try it, but because I have many appointments and some of my doctors are hundreds of miles apart. That's a long walk for a Unilaker. Parking is the tricky part about driving. When I'm using my wheelchair, I don't need handicapped parking so I can park close to the entrance. I need it so there's enough room to the side of my vehicle to get the wheelchair in and out. That wheelchair accessible curb is also mighty important because my wheelie skills are pathetic. My van doesn't care how dependent I am on it, which explains why it had the nerve to break something a few days before amputation. Now that I'm out of the hospital and rehab, I'm taking it in to get fixed. After dropping off the keys, I just had to find a way to get a few miles across town without a car before my two older kids got home from school. No biggie. Thankfully, I had a plan for that. I made it from the mechanic to the bus station just in time to hop on. I made it just in time. Buses are pretty cool when you're a little kid. They're even cooler if your mom gets to board in style. This is when I go to yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. All we have to do now is sit back and enjoy the ride home. Rolling home in my wheelchair is a no-go because there's an especially big hill on the way, it's a hot day, and I need to get home before my big kids get off the school bus. So I'll just relax and rest my arms. Uh-oh. Excuse me, bus driver? Um, didn't we miss a turn? Specifically my turn? My stop is at the top of the hill. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, ah. Uh. Yes, I see. Where you have encountered a problem with the master plan. This bus runs two routes. The first half is nearly identical, but it's the second half that would take me close to home. Unfortunately, it's the only route that doesn't start first thing in the morning. It won't run until after my older kids get off the school bus. No problem. I'll just head back to the bus station and phone a friend. Oh, for help. Ah, no answer. No worries. I'll just call another friend. Ooh, no answer there either. You know, I'll call my husband. We need to call Dada. Maybe he can take a break from work to give me a ride. This is a terrible time to be in a meeting. Maybe I can get a hold of somebody else? Seriously? Is everyone in town away from their phones at the exact same time? We're ditching the master plan and going with plan C. Back on the bus, baby. 20 minutes later, the bus kindly deposits us at the closest stop to home. Say bye, bus. Bye, bye bus. Bye, bus. The base of the steep mile and a half hill. Okay, up the hill. Okay, here we go. My sidekick and I are on our own. Gotta make it. We're in a race against time and school bus. Thankfully, Mama is super speedy. I gotta get up the hill. Speed is a relative term. What I meant by speedy is that I'm actually making progress up the hill, whereas all y'all two-lakers would be stuck at the bottom if you had to make it up under similar conditions. 
What I like in lakes, I make up for determination. It's steeper than it looks. Remember how I said things get interesting when you combine a disability with parenthood? Let's go. We need to get home. With my hands occupied and my torso bent double, baby can't sit on my lap, so I'm going to have to use more creative means of keeping him on track. Just when I thought my older kids would beat me home only to find an empty house and think I'd abandoned them, help came to the rescue. Leave a comment if this little guy melted your heart like he did mine. Just then, a neighbor drove by. Upon seeing what either looked like an ethically persevering mama, or a pathetically stranded amputee mom with a tired toddler, she pulled over. Stephanie, would you like a ride? Yes. We've been going for hours. It's hot. Get in. I'll come help you with him. With Tracy's timely intervention, I made it home just in time to welcome my kids home and pretend like it'd been a perfectly ordinary day. And in a way, it had been. Every day we face challenges, some of them recurring, others unique enough to only happen once. Some adventures are fun, others not so much. The key is that if things go wrong, you simply roll with it and do the best you can with the hand you've been dealt, which basically sums up life after becoming disabled. Tired but grateful, the day ended the way it had begun, with silly foxes. Want to watch more adventurous adventures? Here's a video wherein I leap out of a racing wheelchair speeding down a mountain towards certain destruction. True story. And here's a playlist about how I became an amputee. I'm Stefanina. Thanks for joining me on my amputee adventures. Okay.